years on, people have gone out of jobs with the, the government regime has made people out of a job. And not only have they lost their jobs, they've also lost their homes. There's a lot of things the government say that people, that there is no poverty in England. I would say there's quite a lot of poverty in England. I would say there's as much poverty here as there is anywhere else in the world. If you are born poor in Britain, you will stay poor. Basically, government policy has engendered um, the idea that if you have money, you will increase your money. If you have very little money, you will stay like that. You will stay poor. <laughs> I'll get £27 now. If I had a job, I'd need at least £180 to live on because of my rent and community charge and all that. Because you don't get no benefits when you're working. I just, uh, I've just got to try and go out all that much. My mum helps me out. She could toss me dinners and that. It's hard to live on. It makes me mad because they don't deserve that much money when there's people having the water cut off and people who can't, who can't afford food for the kids now. And they're, they're justifying getting that half a million pound a year. It's just, it's just unreal. The British government believes that the free market, unregulated markets, are the best way to compete in the world and to create jobs. And that means that people in Britain have far fewer rights, both social and employment rights, than elsewhere in the European Union countries. Uh, we have no legal minimum wage in this country. There is no limit to the hours that people are asked to work each week. And indeed, there is no right to paid holidays for any British citizen. Now, that has not, in fact, resulted in the creation of more jobs. We've created far fewer jobs, proportionately, than other European countries in recent years. But it has resulted in very considerable poverty and hardship. In order to make the money go around, you go without things. Sometimes your diet's not as good as it could be, you know. The kids like meat, but it's very rare we have meat. And then the heating you would have on at certain hours, but you wouldn't have it on all the time, where probably somebody who was financially better off would have more heating and they'd probably have a better diet and that sort of situation. So you, you adapt to what you've got coming in. Cheese, John, please. Mm -hmm. 
large companies tend to have um, people come in, financial advisors come in and set a target. The target for my sort of work at the moment for new employers after five and a half years of me being there, they tried to employ people for £3.69, £3. I think the amount was, um, which was below the full pound minimum working wage. And um, the, it just doesn't seem to work. There, there doesn't seem to be enough people willing to go ahead to try and get the minimum wage. People are too worried about losing their jobs to stand stand up for the rights in this country. Good afternoon, Birmingham Settlement. Can I help you? If you'd like to hold the line, I'll put you through to our money advice department. Hold the line, please. Good afternoon, Birmingham Settlement. In Newtown, there are a lot of working poor. That's people who are uh, working full-time, but probably working for a fairly low salary, but are earning just a little bit too much to qualify for help from the government with Social Security. I think Britain wants to compete with the rest of Europe. They feel that uh, they should act as the low-wage economy in Europe, not only to win an advantage over their European partners, but also to attract investment from the third world and from the newly, newly developing countries on the Pacific Rim, such as Taiwan and South Korea. So that we recently had a report in the French newspaper, Le Mans, telling us that, uh, with quotes from Taiwanese and South Korean industrialists, telling us that they were coming to Britain because wages in Britain were in fact lower than in their home countries. lies in having a flexible economy where entrepreneurs can um, take advantage of new opportunities as they arise which is as competitive as possible internationally and the government sees some of the kind of legislation that would be brought in by the social protocol of, of Maastricht as acting against that, as, as tying the hands of employers, as making it more difficult for them to hire workers and to fire workers. And they argue that um, if it is difficult to fire your employees, then you are going to be less likely to hire them in the first place. We've already halved the amount of people that were in non-craft, which is uh, engineering, non-craft unions. So our numbers are halved, so that means that the unions are no longer as strong as they was. What they could have done five years ago, they're no longer capable of. People don't believe anymore in unions. No, there's no strength. People, the unions themselves, in number, are so down, they no longer take... They, they no longer seem to have the power. They no longer seem to have the ability that they used to hold years ago. If the union said the company would do this, the company did it. Now the union say, oh, if the company say that's OK, that's what we're going to do. I think the, the government would not at all argue that its policy had been intended to increase social exclusion. It would argue perhaps that the position might have been worse if... Um, it had not liberalised the, the labour market and if the trades unions had, had remained strong. It has been more concerned, for instance, to keep down the level of government spending so that the level of taxation can be kept down. And again, it sees that as being part of that a low level of taxation will bring benefits to the enterprise economy. It will make it easier for firms to, to make profits and to reinvest them. And therefore, in the long run, to create employment which will benefit the whole community. But I think what's very, this has been called, the, one, one of the, the names that has been given to this is the trickle-down theory, that, that if things go well at the top, then eventually the benefits of that will trickle down to the bottom. Well, I think 
What is now very clear from what's the statistics we have on what's happened in Britain since the late 1970s is that that has not yet happened. <laughs> would um, send someone that you call a bailiff that would come out and um, hassle you, sort of. Some of them's all right, some of them would just, you know, they have like a court order to come in and take things from your home, you know, that would cover the cost of whatever. And then that's it. Some, you know, you get some that sort of maybe take the law in their own hand and um, come out and, you know, hassle you. You know, sometimes you'd have to fight back and then you end up, you know, going to prison for um, grievous bodily harm. I'm putting the coal into the machine. Now I've got elect some electricity. Um, <clears throat> this is based on something that called um, a budget scheme. Um, this is how it works. Um, you have to go to the, any news agent with your card and then have um, as many tokens, you know, maybe five pound worth of tokens, maybe ten pound worth of tokens. If I haven't got any tokens, um, I'll just have to stay in the dark until when I'm able to do so, you know, I'm able to get some money to buy the tokens to put into the meter. And then you'll be out of electricity? Yeah, I'll be out of electricity until I'm able to um, get the token to put in. There's nothing else I can do. In the last two government budgets, there have been cuts in welfare benefits. And the general trend is for the government to, to be withdrawing support, withdrawing the social security safety net from people who desperately need that help. And basically it amounts to the government saying to individuals that really you must fend for yourself. is lower than, than what our bills are. Uh, it's, but we have to juggle a, between bills. Like uh, if we like if we got water water and rent at the same time, I have to pay one or the other one. Um, we have been threatened with court action from the uh, MEB and the poll tax people. Uh, basically, they just come and take the furniture if we don't pay the bill. The opting out system appeals to people who can afford their own pension. What actually happens is they contract out of the state earning relation, state earnings pension scheme, which means there is less money in that scheme for poor people who will claim when they retire. So in 30 years' time, it's, it may be that there is no retirement pension which the government pays. 
So I don't know, I don't know what will happen to people who cannot contract out because they're not working or because they earn too little to buy into a private pension. Again, it's helping the rich people get richer and the poor will get poorer as a consequence. We have uh, a lot of building going on at the moment. They're altering the flats by filling in the balconies, uh, putting a cage over them and windows because people get so depressed that they jump off the balconies. I sometimes get depressed myself, but I don't think I'd ever jump off the balcony. Um, you never thought about that? In the past, I probably have, just as a passing thought, but, you know, I usually, I tend to find something else to occupy my mind. Um, I'll go for a walk. Uh, sometimes I feel that angry about the way things are going that I'll walk for miles without realising how far I've gone. Uh, then I have to walk back home. <laughs> Today. What is happening? What they'll, is happening? They'll go in a minute. They were climbing in the workyard. You see the ladders on the roofs there? They take them and climb into the flats on the ground floor. I would say they're only about 11, 12 year olds. We've got you on camera now, clear off. See them run off now. Look, they've run with the gun. And why was he picked up? Because he was uh, caught in a pub. But they hadn't got no uh, evidence to charge him, so they had to let him off. But that ain't the first incident I've had with my son anyway. If he can get money, he'll do whatever he can to get it. So what kick do you get out of it? I don't get no kick out of it. Well, what do you do? It's fun. Oh, it's fun robbing people's houses and robbing people but on the streets. Houses. There is a high crime rate in this area, I feel, because of the uh, social deprivation. Uh, a lot of movement in and out of the area. And the drugs obviously attract the wrong type of person into the area. And to get money for the drugs, people are committing crime. When I was younger, I know the change. Years ago, you could walk anywhere, go out, leave doors open, no one would bother you. And even like 10 years ago, you could do that. But it's gradually got worse and worse. So no one really goes out unless they're going in a group or someone's picking them up in a car or something. If I could get a private education, yes, perhaps I would. If I could afford that, yes, I would. In later life, if I, you know, move on and get a decent job, yes, she will have a private education. But I'd like the best for her to have a decent education and then hopefully she'll get a decent job. But what is, you know, how can you see 20 years from now? When I was at school, I didn't think it would be like this. I thought I'd left school, found, gone to college, got a wonderful job and been happy, married and the rest of it. No Cinderella tale.
We have a real problem in Britain in terms of the level of investment in both education and training. About a million school children are now being educated in classes which are more than 30 in size, which makes it very difficult for those children who need the extra help really to get that help. The result, according to the employers' organisation, the Confederation of British Industry, is that we have a workforce which is too poorly educated to compete effectively in the world. And one of the main reasons why we've seen the very sharp increase in the gap between the rich and the poor in Britain is that we have this enormous difference in educational standards and educational opportunities. I think Britainisation would be a disaster for the people of Europe. We've had an experiment in Britain lasting for 15 years or more to see what would happen if we pursued that set of economic and social policies. The result has been a very substantial growth in poverty and in hardship, but it has not resulted in more jobs or greater prosperity for the nation as a whole. I don't think they do care about people in, you know, the rich do not care. Um, in saying they don't, they don't care about everybody, they care about their own. But when it boils down to saying, well, there's no such thing as poverty in England. If they were to open their eyes a bit more or come out into the communities a bit more, they will see the poverty. So how do you look at your own future? My own, I'm not looking at my own future at the moment. I'll just live by day to day. It's, it's this I'm looking forward to, you know, the future that they've got. Which at the moment, they haven't got a future. I feel ashamed to say that I come from Britain because I can understand the very real anger and frustration of people elsewhere in Europe when they hear that Britain is not prepared to accept the same standards as those which have existed for many years in other European countries. The fact that we want to compete on the basis of low wages and therefore perhaps to put our European partners out of jobs. The fact that we're not prepared to accept the same standards of protection for children at work as those which exist in other European countries. And the fact that we are openly prepared to undermine the attempts of the rest of Europe to move forward on the basis of solidarity and partnership in order to win a short-term economic and political gain. Sometimes I'd sit down and cry. Sometimes I would um, go to the um, half license or something like that and buy myself uh, maybe a can of beer or um, some brandy, some alcoholic drink and sort of sit in the house and um, cry to myself. and drink the whole bottle you know but I don't get drunk or anything like that you know it's just like to me at the time it seems like my problem has been solved but then the following day when the drink is finished then I'm back to square one <laughs> <laughs> 